I now have concrete proof of what I've been talking about since 2015. Game codes have almost no content from them, and when they do, they suck. I myself bought many assets for my games, but I never invented goals of thousands of reyes to later buy a cheap and ready-made system and just stick it in my game in any sort of way and make it a buggy mess. If you take all the packages that were cited in the indictment and try to create a new open world game, it would not even be possible to have 20% of what 171 is today. The understanding that a game that uses outsourced services is something bad, harmful, or that would be a demerit in some way for the health of a game, regardless of the form or quantity, shows the lack of knowledge about the game development market. The Moral Dilemma Is the use of assets bad? While I'm not a game developer, I've asked others and looked at opinions online, and generally speaking, asset usage is fine. It's encouraged. It's even necessary at times. So why is this such a big deal? Throughout the entire day, I got messages from people disagreeing with me saying that it's okay to use ready-made assets. And I made it clear that this is not the point of this post. I myself said that I use a lot of assets in my games and I've spent even more money than 171 on assets. I didn't say that it's wrong for games to use ready-made assets, but people are distorting what I said to make it look like that. All I'm saying is that it's dishonest that they bought the whole game practically and invented goals where when they reach them, they use the money to buy ready-made items that are cheap something that didn't even need goals. That is, everything is dishonest, and mainly to show people who keep comparing 171 with GTA, saying that they created everything by themselves and that the game is 100% Brazilian, etc., since that's not how indie works. Even though they bought almost the entire game, they still had $50,000 and 10 years to polish, but they didn't. Many developers use these assets. It's what they're there for. They're intended to help indie games speed up the process and build games that are more developer-friendly, less complicated. Meaning they're required to know less while being enabled to do more. This asset controversy is more damaging to the soul of the game, in my opinion. The game was marketed, backed, and pushed as a completely Brazilian game. Yet, most of the assets it features are made by non-Brazilians. It's like traveling all the way to New York City just for the pizza, walking into the first store you see and getting a frozen pizza. Some argue that this is no different than how Rockstar outsourced Euphorian physics engine for their GTA titles. And I agree. The only difference here is the quantity. Did Rockstar also purchase public pre-made vehicle handling? Did they purchase public pre-made models, the buildings? And this isn't like outsourcing. At least outsourcing is custom made, custom ordered to fit the design and vision. This is like seeing the same core gameplay mechanics in tons of other indie games. Also, Take-Two owns Euphoria anyways. It's all under the same umbrella. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and more. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. It offers more than 2,000 vehicles to fight with, like tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. Whether you're looking for fast, action-packed matches or a more realistic, tactile experience, War Thunder offers intense PvP battles at various modes to accommodate all play styles. Every vehicle is extremely detailed down to their individual components, and you you can customize each vehicle with their in-depth customization system. The details shine in 4K with stunning locations and graphics crafted with immersion in mind. If you're like me, you'll love the destruction that you can cause to enemy vehicles. War Thunder is available now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and the previous console generation. Play War Thunder now and register using the link in my description to receive a huge free bonus pack which includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account boosters, and much more. Now, people are lying and saying that I said it was a fraud. And at absolutely no time did I say that. I just said that what they delivered is dishonest and objectionable, even though they used ready-made stuff and spent so much money and time on the game. There is absolutely nothing fraudulent about what they did just incompetence and lack of transparency in saying that they were going to buy assets instead of creating the systems from scratch. 
I doubt that most people who donated to this project believed that these goals of tens of thousands of reyes were only for implementing ready-made, and still poorly implemented, systems. This is a simple complaint of the lack of transparency with the supporters. But YouTubers and news outlets love the word fraud so they can make their clickbait titles. These goals had to be met. The BGG team committed to each one of these campaign resolutions. They chose the price to give the product, and backers bought. If, for instance, the day-night asset failed to merge into their game for some reason, imagine the asset was incompatible. BGG would still have the responsibility of delivering on their commitment. Because of this, it's reasonable to assume any excess money accumulated from the campaigns would have been used to guarantee the team could work to build something like that from scratch, if it came to that. BGG had all the risk, and had expectations from backers that they had to meet. The risk was on them to fulfill their obligations, and that was the price they were comfortable doing it with. In my opinion, the use of assets is fine. Art is not art because one person or company made every piece of that work. It's art because of the direction and final outcome of the product. Thousands of pictures can be laid in a specific way and form a brand new picture. Is the art not that final image? If we can see beauty in forming thousands of pictures to look like a new one, can we not see the beauty in merging dozens of assets to create a brand new thing? While it's true that there is no problem with using assets, it's also true that people can feel as though a game utilizing this many assets can feel less unique. After all, the picture made up of thousands of smaller pictures will always have the same color scheme, and for many, they may have been hoping for a new color. Assets are one thing, but optimization is another. The game is still in its alpha state, so judging it now may be considered by some to be a pointless endeavor. But sometimes, you know better than to buy a house that's being built on a bad foundation. I don't care how much they fortify the walls or how pretty it looks when they're done, I know what it's standing on. The number of draw calls is high, two to three times greater than GTA 5. It's around seven to eight thousand. This is a combination of many things, but in short, the main ones are the number of objects slash meshes that render at the same time, the number of materials for each object, and the complexity of the shaders. The game has many separate objects that have not been merged into one mesh, and others where the mesh is so large there is no working occlusion culling or LOD, like the pole wires. The whole map is constantly loading one full mesh for all pull wires at all times. But honestly, I expected the draw calls to be worse. The main reason apparently is a monstrous vertice count. In this ordinary scene alone, there are 38 million vertices. Yes, we're not talking the whole game, we're just talking about the vertices being rendered on this screen alone, just this one, that's crazy. I'm glad I went to college, otherwise I wouldn't know the word vertices. For comparison, a Gran Turismo 7 car has 500,000 triangles. I don't know the number of vertices, but on average one car is half, so basically this scene would be the equivalent of 152 cars from Gran Turismo 7 being rendered in LOD at the same time. I'm sorry I'm laughing about it, but it's still just bizarre to me. This is because the models in this game are exaggeratedly high poly, and of course, they lack LODs to optimize them at a distance. That is, for 171 developers or any other game developers looking to learn, the main things they should optimize in this case are decrease the number of vertices in the 3D models and or add LODs, decrease the number of meshes and materials, more correctly manage the size of objects for better culling, and therefore less draw calls and vertices, consider using batching or instancing on repeating objects, things to consider that I couldn't verify, house interiors need to be fully unloaded, both the objects and the NPCs, before approaching the house or entering, and use as little dynamic objects as possible, mark them as static. As soon as you make static objects dynamic, they become sentient, and that's a problem for all of us. 
GTA 5 is optimized very well. If you look at the game files, you can see that the map is built in sections that are all one single mesh. This makes it so the game doesn't have to ask the computer to bring up multiple objects and pictures from multiple places. But in 171, you can tell everything is plopped onto the map and struggling to keep up. It needs to be segmented into fewer meshes. This is something that only programmers can understand that is absurd, and it's a little hard to explain to non-developers why this is a big issue. Basically, this is one of the few parts they worked on in the game's code, and just one of the few things they worked on. There is a huge lack of professionalism in dealing with programming. It's a code field written in Portuguese instead of English using letters with accents and a question mark. This should have been written, is automatic gun instead. This kind of thing seen from a programmer is unacceptable. Of course, the game won't explode because of that. Well, I can't promise it, but probably not. But you can already imagine the worst. This indicates that they have no idea what it's like to write programming code. BGG is a dedicated group. They have huge aspirations. They deliver on their promises. They've managed to make one of the most impressive looking GTA clone-esque games I've ever seen. They're indie, but their aspirations are AAA. I think that while they've managed to somewhat meet their pledge resolutions, they don't seem to realize the scope of their workload. If you look at their Steam store page under 171's description, they say, We expect to release the final version of the game in early 2024, but that could change depending on how the game progresses in your early access and the resources available over time. So BGG estimates that they'll complete the game in the next two years. What constitutes a completed game to them? We want to add more contents to the game, including a map expansion, new vehicles, new mechanics, a wider variety of NPCs, and a campaign mode to tell the game's story. These are major goals. A campaign mode set in this half square kilometer map is a bit strange sounding. Their goals have shifted and changed so much throughout development. For instance, the 2018 campaign had a feature proposed at the $24,300 mark to include a second city. While this wasn't reached, the second fundraiser received 300% of its max goal and even included some features from the previous campaign's unreached goals like the day-night, more vehicles, random events around the city, weapon shops, and explosives. Weirdly, they also included the map again, even though this had already been purchased by the backers in the previous campaign. Considering the extra money they earned, the map expansion should have been included. You can't buy the map twice, and other unmet features were realized in the second campaign that weren't realized in the first, so it's a no-brainer that the second city should have been included. The current map is pretty small. It's about the size of a neighborhood, or at the most, maybe two neighborhoods. In 2015, the lead game developer of BGG said, the final goal is to make the map dozens of square kilometers that is inspired by a reduced version of the state of Sao Paulo. And that it will be more than just one city with areas like beaches and airports. In reality, seven years of game development after those statements, we have a half square kilometer neighborhood that is nothing like what was described. Comparatively, GTA 3's map is eight square kilometers in size. The squares I've laid here on the real-life New York City showcase the promises made, and the realities delivered. There are 24 one square kilometer squares here, and this is the size of the 171 map as it stands today. Does this mean that the completed game that they expect to complete in the next two years will include a map expansion 48 times the size of what we have now? Of course not. The reality of this promise is that it's not going to be deliverable. Fans were hoping to see promises like this fulfilled when they backed the project. Considering their their current track record of progress, it does not seem even remotely possible to achieve the goals they're looking to accomplish in two years. Twelve years of development got us a small neighborhood with a few cars, a somewhat clunky traversal system, character, weapon, AI, and police systems. Twelve years basically got us an asset flip. This is not meant to bring down the project, because what they've been able to achieve is really awesome. It is, however, to bring reality into the picture. If they want to achieve the major goals for this project, they need to get serious. They need to grow. Seven guys can't get this workload out. In 2015, BGG said, We do not work on the game full time. If the collection exceeds the goals stipulated on the website, we will invest in a larger team. 
The second fundraiser they received receiving 300% of the goal, in addition to the alpha sales of the game on Steam, should both enable and obligate them to expand the BGG team. They need to hire more qualified members, more manpower, in order to meet these goals, and pursue bigger opportunities for the game in the future, like online. The promises and ambitions are too big to achieve with seven inexperienced guys, with this being their first game. You're trying to operate the Titanic and meet the expectations of the massive guest list all with a skeleton crew. You're either going to hit an iceberg or get lost at sea. Be more transparent, grow the team, and set reasonable goals. If you need more money, explain exactly why, what it will be used for, and ask for it. We do have plans to create an online version in the future, but this is an area that requires even more investment. And to avoid creation delays, we'll focus on the game's story mode first. If the game is well received, we will invest the profit from sales in the creation of the online mode. I think that they should focus quickly on getting this game multiplayer. As of now, there isn't much to do. The gameplay isn't very satisfying. I'm not very confident in a campaign being playable within two years, especially one with good cutscenes, gameplay loops, acting, and all that comes with a solid campaign. I think there is a long-lasting, strong future in it for 171 when it comes to online play. GTA needs an RP competitor. Not all RP is about role-playing. Some just like to have the GTA Online experience in custom environments, with interesting car mods and more. If they focused primarily on making it server-oriented for online play and RP-style servers, they'd probably grow the franchise and deliver more now. They could create royalty systems where server owners would pay a little bit of money to maintain a server in their game. Not only that, but they'd be the only serious competitor in the RP space for GTA. Then the server owners could implement their own additions for the servers, and BGG could focus on map expansions, core gameplay improvements, air vehicles, and more. But how is this game? If you remove all the drama, how does this game look and feel for an alpha? Does it feel like a game that's been in development for 12 years? It really doesn't. It doesn't even really feel like a game. It feels like a small project with very nice functionality compared to competitors. It definitely stands out compared to the competition, but it has you wondering where the competition would be with 12 years and $50,000 to work with also. The game is currently a neighborhood with vehicles to drive around. You can shoot people and fight gangs and police. The combat isn't very rewarding. It's not like you're hooked gameplay wise. The vehicles are very bouncy, much like GTA 4. I'm probably one of the outliers, but I really like GTA 4's driving physics, so I really like 171's driving. The AI isn't amazing, but they're not ridiculously stupid or anything. There are neat details, like you can hold pedestrians hostage. The gameplay loops that are available now are basically just delivery missions and gang shootout locations. So if you want to just drive around, you have to be careful because of these hostile bubble, red bubble zones that take up a good percentage of the map considering how small the map is. $30 is very pricey. I would not have purchased this just to play it. I only bought this to make a video on it. It isn't much at its current state. It is just an alpha though, and the future, along with the promises that BGG have made, make this game look promising. It does need so much more though before it's ever going to be worth $30. For example, my friends that recently spent $40 to $50 on Star Citizen said that they didn't feel it was worth the money yet, and that game definitely has more content in its current state than 171 will likely ever have. So just because it's an alpha doesn't mean it can't be criticized for its price. 171 needs a lot more before it's ever going to be seriously considered in the gaming world, and hopefully, with the money they've earned, they can step up to that challenge. The Brazilian fans that were hoping for this game's success honestly deserve better. This game meant a lot to their community. This game was supposed to step up to the rest of the industry and cement them as a real contender in the game industry. I think they backed the wrong group though. Seven guys who have never made a game before? It's scary to consider, and open world games are not the easiest to design. They're leagues more complicated than other genres. But has BGG achieved what they set out to accomplish 12 years ago? Not yet. But with the right support, so long as they're transparent and as long as they make the right decisions moving forward, I think that they can make it. And that's it. Weeks later, the site continues to receive DDoS attacks from 171 fans to try to take me down. In the past, they've even tried to make me lose my job. I continue to be attacked by lies they invented about me, like statements I didn't make about 171. Lying accusations like, I am a mod plagiarist? 
Since I've been creating mods for GTA for over a decade, teaching and disseminating the source code of everything? Yeah, I'm a real fascist for that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that one. I don't cut that one in. It's me against YouTubers and millions of viewers, lying and distorting, ignoring all my arguments in exchange for the ad hominem. It's just envy. Ignoring that I've been criticizing the game since 2015, when it wasn't even famous, and I wasn't even a developer. That's the internet. People just want to believe what they choose. They only share lies that defend their opinion. And being honest doesn't work. And because of this, I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life dealing with more lies. We do not understand why we have become the focus of a campaign that puts our merit as developers and creators in check, including charging us with serious crimes such as embezzlement and fraud, thus hurting our image with the public for no reason. What intrigues us the most is not only the lack of evidence, but we also wonder what the objective behind this campaign is. There are people who may not like our work. We respect that and believe that constructive criticism is healthy for development, but the type of accusation that was directed at us, in addition to being misrepresented, harms the game development market as a whole, and not just we. People will point fingers at Junior, calling him envious of the success of 171, mainly because Junior has been working for about five months on his own game in the style of GTA. There's also lots of drama and accusations focused on Junior about plagiarism that seem to go back and forth, leading nowhere. People will point fingers at BGG, saying that they simply created an asset flip. There are many ways to look at this. We we can't know the exact motivation behind Junior's decision to expose what he did. We can simply consider his proposal. His question, was BGG clear with backers that they would use the money to purchase assets and implement them rather than building them from the ground up? Does that premise even matter? Is the poor code quality problematic? If 171 is the big player now, that status will come with criticism. Is this an accusation of fraud? Or is this an accusation of a lack of transparency? An accusation of fraud would mean to say that they did not deliver on their pledge goals, and I never saw Junior claim that. And BGG objectively, obviously, definitely met all the goals that they outlined. Everything that they said, everything they pledged, is in the game in some form or another. His position seems to be that they should have been more upfront in telling backers that they were paying for pre-made Unreal Engine asset implementation. A question of morality rather than legality. I look forward to seeing where 171 will end up in the future. Will they include a substantial and satisfying campaign, or will it be more like the map vision versus outcome? A, we added five missions so there's a campaign now sort of situation. Only time will tell. I hope both groups find success in their future projects. Game development doesn't sound easy, so a fair bit of criticism and support is necessary to get difficult projects like this to where they need to be. Thank you to Trip and Badger for narrating the two sides of this. Thank you to Mean Contori and Junior for also taking the time to explain things to me and translate difficult aspects of this situation. I tried to reach out to Beta Games Group, but I didn't get a reply. They're probably too busy and didn't know what my English meant anyways. Thank you for watching, and let me know if I missed something or if I got something wrong, because I probably did. I'll make a point of correcting it in the description. Don't cut that one. The final goals make the map dozens of square kilometers. Don't forget, you can play War Thunder on your platform of choice and register using the link in my description to get those free bonuses. You don't want to miss out on the intense vehicle action that only War Thunder can offer.